So tonight we have a special guest, Rachel Brunson, my favorite third grade teacher and a leader on the front lines in the fight against hunger. And she's a Sodexo Youth Service America grant recipient. Rachel teaches at the Elsa England Elementary School in Austin, Texas. Uh, she recently led her students to the state capitol building where they rallied against childhood hunger and they gained the attention of local media and politicians. And with our support, Rachel was joined by Share Our Strength's lead partner in Texas, the hunger, uh, Texas Hunger Initiative. Together they witnessed the breakfast bill, that's a bill that expands existing school breakfast programs in Texas, pass the House of Representatives and move forward to the governor's office. We're proud to have partnered with Youth Service America to provide a grant to support Rachel and her students in the fight against childhood hunger. Please join me in, re in welcoming my favorite third grade teacher, Rachel Brunson. Thank you. Oh, I'm nervous, don't go. Oh, no, no, you're fine, you got it, you got it. That was a very nice introduction and I, I appreciate it. I, I told Bob, please don't go, stay with me. <laughs> he, said, he said, you got it. Uh, my audience is usually much smaller and much shorter and uh, they kind of have to like me. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I was trying to think about what I was gonna say to you guys. It's not, it's not often that a teacher gets out to an event like this and I was trying to, to think about how I would convey what happened in my classroom this year because it was it was magical and it was amazing and I, I really think the Sodexo Foundation for the grant and I feel very honored to be carrying on Stephen Brady's legacy here tonight. I want you guys to think about you're about to have a great dinner coming up a lovely dinner I'm sure. I want you to put yourself in the place I want you to be the person, the dinner comes out, and you're the person that doesn't get one. You're not getting dinner tonight. And you're hungry, and you haven't eaten for a couple of days, but you're the only person in the room or at your table that's not getting served dinner. Think about how you would feel. Now, you can have dinner if you're willing to wear a sign that says, I'm poor, I can't afford this, and somebody's gonna pay for it for me. Think about that emotion that you're feeling. You might be feeling angry, confused, hurt, less. I can tell you that 20 plus years ago in a, in a cafeteria in a small town in Texas, that was me. I was very hungry and I was very confused and I, I made an excuse every single day about why I wasn't eating because at that time, you had to wear a bright yellow tag. If you were on free lunch, you had to wear the tag that said, hey, we're poor, we can't afford it. And it was hard. And it was hard to think about during the classroom time, it was hard to think about school because I was thinking about how hungry I was and how ashamed I was that my family couldn't afford food for us. And, you know, I grew up on a farm, and if, if the crops were bad, we didn't eat. And I wasn't the only one. And I was blessed enough to have teachers and people like yourselves who gave me a hand up eventually. My brother, not. not. You know, it's really hard to make education your first priority when you're, when you're hungry. And I think, um, as one of the speakers said earlier, one in four Texas children are hungry. They're feeling what I felt 20 plus years ago. They're hungry and they're confused and they're hurt and they're thinking, am I less? Am I less valuable? Am I less of a person? What am I worth? And that's what they're going to school with every day. And that's what we're trying to stop. And I was thinking to myself, you know, this was a problem, I wish it were only 10 years ago, but 20 plus years ago. This was a problem back then and it's a problem now. And we haven't solved it. This group of 1,000 adults has not solved the problem. So guess what? We have to get our youth involved. 
Because when they look at the problem of childhood hunger, they don't see the obstacles, they see the possibilities. They don't see the red tape. When they look at the problem, and what you'll see in Daniel's video a little bit later, all they see is, hey, there's enough, share. Why aren't we sharing? What's the problem? Let's get started. And so this year, and you're thinking eight-year-olds, right? I teach eight-year-olds. Many of you probably have eight-year-olds. They came into the classroom in September, and I said, hey, you know, they didn't know me. I didn't know them. We got to know each other pretty quickly. And the, um, I said, what do you think hunger is? And so they all wrote in their journals what they thought hunger was. And I was like, who do you think is hungry? And their answers were, well, if you're hungry, you're lazy. If you're overweight, you can't possibly be hungry because you have enough. Um, my dad says you need to get a job. Uh, just the misconceptions were huge. And it, and it wasn't my job at that point to clear those misconceptions up. My job at that point was to just let them say what they needed to say. And so then we started to ask questions. I said, okay, so I get your opinion on people need to get a job. I get that. Um, and I said, but what about their kids? So let's say your dad didn't have a job, and your mom didn't have a job, and you're out. What would you do? And they kind of thought about it, and they were like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. And so then I said, well, let's, let's ask the question. Let's talk about it. My kids came up with over 100 questions about hunger, and they, they ranged from, you know, why don't people just get a job to what if someone's pregnant, how do they help? I mean, they, they ran the gamut of questions, over 100 questions. And the more the kids asked and the more they found out, the more passionate they became about this issue. And initially, I could tell they were, they were holding back and they didn't think they could be activists for the cause. But every little step forward that they took, they, they started believing it more. And every little bit more that they learned about the face of hunger, they were on fire. They were mad. They were, why is this happening? You know, because to them, it, it, you know, they live in this little bubble. And they, when they started seeing how many of kids just like them were hungry, they were astounded. And when they realized, it could be my classmate. And you know what? It was their classmate. We had plenty of kids at our school hungry. But they started to see it, and they started to feel it, and they started to own it, and they started to develop a passion, and they started to take that passion out into the community and involve the community and invite them in and involve their parents and just change perception, just change perception. Eight-year-olds were doing that. I will cry if I talk too much more about it. Um, it you know, at the beginning, it, so the big deal in the state of Texas is, you know, yes, this is great, you're trying to save uh, childhood hunger, but how are you tying in the curriculum? This issue of hunger was every single day of our year. At some point in the day, it came up. When we talked about it, we reflected upon it. When we studied economics, the kids said, hey, supply and demand, let's make some stuff and sell it. They raised over $1,000 right there, boom, like that. Let's give it all to the Let's give it all to the Capital Area Food Bank for summer meals. That's one of the programs that we're supporting. Um, let's make these cool wristbands and sell them. Boom, we came up with another $1,000 to give to the Capital Area Food Bank. Um, we looked at maps. When it was time to study maps, we looked at maps of how many kids that were hungry, which was astounding to them. It was just astounding, just in our county. Um, we had, we had um, social media, we had media, but these are eight-year-olds. I just, can you get that, that they're eight? We had eight-year-olds. We had social media people come in and teach my kids how to do a press release. They did a press release, which garnered lot, a newspaper article about us. Eight-year-olds wrote that. And so they raised that amount of awareness for the issue. And that was our goal. Our, our goal the whole entire time was to put a face on childhood hunger and to raise awareness. So they wrote a press release. They made brochures. They called people. They wrote persuasive, persuasive texts to pers 
President Obama and Ellen DeGeneres, every single thing we did had a purpose. And it all tied into our curriculum. And every single day, they got just a little bit more passionate. And I can tell you at the beginning, I know if any of you have ever been in a classroom, and I'm not sure if this follows suit here in Washington, D.C., but in Texas, in my school, we'll start out in a big circle, and we're having the conversation. And there are some folks here from YSA that were, that were there with me. We're just having the conversation about hunger, and the conversation in September and the conversation in May were so dramatically different. And seeing that transformation in the kids and seeing them take this to heart and seeing them own it and seeing them become activists was tremendous. And, and they will never forget it, and they'll never stop. In fact, the very last day of school, my kids were not thinking it's the last day of school. They were saying, Miss Brunson, what are we going to do this summer? There are going to be kids that are hungry this summer. What are we going to do? Where are we going to meet? Are we going to volunteer? Are we going to raise money? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we gonna do? I was kind of thinking into school, but they were thinking, <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So, so we've agreed we're going to meet. Um, I kind of got out of order here, but okay, I'm going to go back and then go forward. Sorry. It's, and if you were a student of mine, you'd be totally used to that by now. Um, <laughs> So the last part of the project, the kids, it, it just was, it was just, I don't know how it happened, but there was a breakfast bill proposed by Senator Lucio in Texas. And the opposer of the bill was Senator Nichols in Texas. And so the kids are like, let's do a rally. Let's, let's raise awareness to the face of childhood hunger. And so I'm, okay, okay. That's what I say almost all the time. Okay, well, let's, well, okay, how do you think it's gonna work? So they, we had uh, speakers from all over Texas. Oh, he's telling me, hurry. Okay, I'm going. So it's real hard. Uh, we had speakers from all over Texas come in to the rally. At the rally, the breakfast bill actually passed at the rally, which was amazing. And then the kids were recognized on the House and Senate floor. But what was even more amazing, and I'll leave you with this, right, Bob? <laughs> What was even more amazing, as we're doing the debate, Senator Nichols, first eight years old, they know about a bill, they're passionate about this bill, they're supporting this bill, they're just biting their nails to see if it's going to pass. One of my kids says to me, Senator Nichols, being the opponent of the breakfast bill, he says we can't afford it, Ms. Brunson, do you think that senator could really look me in the eye and say, we can't afford to feed you, I'm sorry, you'll have to be hungry today? And that's where, they, that's where these kids left in May, and they're ready to jump back on it right now. Um, I could talk forever. They should have given you three minutes and me 10, right? Um, <laughs> um, the following video is one of my students, his name is Daniel, and at the beginning of the, of, the, of the year he was very skeptical about what our role would be in solving this problem. He thought we couldn't do it. And by the time that Youth Service America came out and, and did this video, I want you to see where he was. And thank you guys for having me.